The last step of how DNA works in the cell is called DNA translation. Now, this is the part where you're going to figure out what the secret code actually means. Now, in the last lesson, what we talked about was having a strand of DNA, and here's a, a sample of DNA. And the first thing that we did was we made a piece of messenger RNA. Just a reminder, it is the secret code that comes off the master plan and will be sent out to tell the cell exactly what to do. So let's see what we get here. We get A, U, G, C, C, G, A, G, 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 C, C. So here's the example of our messenger RNA. And in the last lesson, you actually got to practice it yourself. Now, we have the secret message. Now it's going to be sent out. And where it's going to be sent is to a place in the cell called the ribosome. Now, a ribosome is a really, really small part in the cell. As a matter of fact, it's just minuscule. It would look in a microscope like just a grain of sand. But I'm going to draw it big enough so that you can see exactly what's going to happen in this ribosome. Now, the easiest way for me to explain a ribosome and how it works is the idea of a scantron. Now, whenever you take a test with a scantron, you go through and you put bubbles for your answers. The bubbles and the order that you put them in is very important. When you run it through the Scantron machine, it reads the bubbles, counts how many you got correct, and that's where you get your score, such as in this case. If you have one out of place, there's a mistake, and a mistake causes problems with your score. Now, what's going to happen here is very similar to taking this Scantron and putting it through the machine. Right now, I wouldn't know how this student did on their test because it's just a bunch of bubbles. Just like this is a bunch of letters that seem to be in random order that mean something, this is a bunch of bubbles in an order that means something, but I don't know what it means until I run it through the machine. Well, the ribosome is the machine that we're going to run it through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of RNA, messenger RNA, and I'm going to run it through the machine. Now, the interesting thing, I'm going to make this a little larger so we can read it, is that it's going to read everything in groups of three. So all I'm doing at this point is rewriting my piece of messenger RNA, and there it is. And so what's going to happen is when it slides through, rather than reading singles like we see on the uh, Scantron, it's going to read everything in groups of three. And so I'm just attaching them so that we see it on paper, what's going to happen. Now, it's going to slide through the ribosome, and as it slides through the ribosome, it's going to read it. Now, what's going to happen is there's going to be an attachment that takes place here. And if you look at it in books, this is how they draw it. This is a piece of what is called transfer RNA. Now, transfer RNA is a, is a part of the cell that's floating around looking for something to attach to. Now, here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a little bit out of these lines and show you exactly how it works. There's three points sticking up on each of them, and they're looking for something to bond to. It's Velcro. Now, we know enough to know that if it says RNA, you're still using the rule that A goes with you. So what is going to be on this piece of transfer RNA? I'm going to make little letters, U, A, C. That's how it will stick to the message. So this is my messenger RNA. There's my RNA, starting here. And it's going to stick to it. G, G, C, U, C, 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 G, G. Now make those really small because you don't have to remember these, but this is how they stick together. So they're sticking together in three, sort of like that. And so the important part of the transfer RNA is what's stuck at the end of the curly end. Now, this curly part is how the molecule wraps on itself. It's sort of, girls, it's sort of like when you pull a rubber band out of your hair and it wads up on itself. 
that's exactly what the molecule does. It's all wrapped on itself. So I just drew it curly like that to make it easier. But on the very end of each of these is going to be an amino acid. I'm going to abbreviate that with an amino acid on the end of every one of these. And as a matter of fact, they're going to have different amino acids on the end of every single one of them. And what's going to happen is whenever you have a bunch of amino acids together, they stick to each other. And when they stick to each other, you have a protein. And that protein tells the cell exactly how to work. So let's see how it works in this case. I'm going to go ahead and take these out. If you wrote those in, that's great. You can write right under them. So let's see what amino acids are going to come about. So we're going to be translating, just like if you were taking Spanish and putting it into English, or another foreign language, or sign language, you're going to translate what it means into English. So we're going to take this secret code and translate it. Well, scientists have learned that these are the amino acids that are used in the cell. Things like leucine and serine and arginine and asparagine. And so they're going to give you a chart just like this to use on the test. It's really simple to use. What you're going to do is you're going to take three letters, let's say C, C, G, that's going to be on our message over here. There it is, C, C, G. And we're going to read it on the chart. Here's how you do it. You find the first letter, the second letter, and then the third letter. And they always give you this chart. You do not have to memorize it. They'll print it for you. All you have to do is use it. So here's how you use it. First letter is a C. That's going to be this category. So it's going to be one of these columns. Second letter is also a C. So it's going to be in this column. So where these two columns come together, it's going to be one of these inside this box. So first letter is C. Second letter is C. Those two boxes come together here. Third letter is G. And G is the fourth one down. So it's in this box, the fourth one down, it is proline that will hook on. So we're going to go ahead and write PRO as an abbreviation right there for proline. So let's go back to our first one, AUG. Let's see what that would be. A, put my finger here, U here. So it's going to be this box. G is the last one in the box. So it's A-U-G. It's this one right here. Methionine. So we'll just abbreviate M-E-T-H-I-O. The next one is A-G-G. -G. Let's see what that is. A-G. So this can be in this box somewhere. And G happens to be the bottom one again. Arginine. We'll abbreviate A R. G. And I, yeah, that works great. A G G. And the last one is G C C. Let's see how we did on this one. G C, so it's in this one. C is the second one down this time, so it's alanine. A L A. We'll just abbreviate like that. And so what happens is, when you slide it through the ribosome very quickly, we're doing it very slow, but very quickly it's going to read in groups of three. And when it reads, methionine hooks onto this and hooks onto this and hooks on to proline and arginine and alanine. And when it gets to the very end, it stops making it. And this group right here in blue is the protein. And the protein tells the cell exactly what it wants it to do. In the next section, you'll get to try one and see if you can get the answer yourself. This is called DNA translation, taking the secret code and making something in the cell that tells the cell exactly how to work. Let me also say this real quick before I finish. Methionine, proline, arginine, alanine has one job. If you change something, you change the job. It's just like rearranging letters and words. There is a specific order they go in. How do you know what they are? You read them on the chart.